Okay, I think maybe we can we can start. Um, right on cue. <laughs> okay, uh, so let's start. Uh, good morning, everybody, and welcome to ISR Virtual Open House. My name is Suriel Bazan, and I'm the head of admissions. And it's uh, on behalf of everybody uh, from the ISR community, it's a real, real pleasure to welcome you this morning. We have a very busy program ahead, so I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. For everybody's information, this uh, session is recorded. So if you do not wish to be recorded, now is the time to turn off your um, screen. That's okay. Turn off your camera if you don't wish to get it. It's completely fine. We're admitting a few more people. Um, we will be welcoming questions at the end of the presentations. So um, at any time, feel free to uh, add questions to the chat and we'll get to them uh, after presentations. And also um, you'll see that we have visual presentations for you this morning. So um, to make sure that you see everything, we just, um, just suggest to just put the active window on and to move it around as you please. So over the course of the um, next hour, it will be a great pleasure to give you an overview of ISR and what uh, makes this school uh, so special. And um, we really hope that I will give you uh, um, that will give you a bit of drive to know more about us. This is our mission statement. Um, we take everything in this mission statement to, um, to heart. Um, we have a lot of talent of, at ISR. Our students are incredibly talented. So we just wanted to show you a short video uh, that was made by students uh, a little while ago. Those students are, were in grade eight and um, here it is. I am Swedish. Japanese. French. Georgia. Czech. Latvian. Chinese. Vietnamese. England. Bulgaria. Arabic. Albanian. Denmark. Russian. Uzbek. Kazakh. Spanish. Thailand. German. Um, so, as you can see, uh, we have a very international community. Uh, between the time this video was made and this school year, we went from 43 nationalities to 47 nationalities represented at ISR in almost as many languages. Um, this is one of, a, of our big pride is our um, community. Uh, we are a small school and uh, we are very community focused. For us, it's incredibly important. And um, I just put there a few uh, numbers. So we were funded in 1997, so it's almost coming up to 25 years. And uh, we have 49 teachers coming from 13 countries. And um, also we have 32 alumni. So we had 32 students graduating from ISR and they are currently studying all around uh, the world. So it's something we're incredibly proud of. I will um, now, without further ado, give the floor to um, ISR director, Mr. Uh, Shane Kells for his opening remarks. Thank you, Cyril. Um, that's a great video. I love that video, by the way. Um, hello everyone and welcome to uh, virtual open house at International School of Riga. 
uh, as Cyril said, we're uh, we're thrilled to, to be doing this for you today. Um, we wish we could do it in person, but uh, this is the next best thing. Uh, events like this uh, are meant to showcase all that schools have to offer. And for ISR, this is no different. Uh, we want to be as open and honest as we can with you, with our potential families, uh, because we know that uh, you're looking to make uh, a decision that's uh, one of the most important decisions you'll make for your child or your children. And that is where, where will they go to school? Um, and I am no different. Uh, when, when I was considering uh, coming here, uh, I have a, a daughter who's in grade eight. And, uh, you know, we thought, is this the school for our daughter? Because that's what, that's what part of, of moving or part of even just moving uh, across town is, is do we move the children and is it good for them? Um, I'm extremely proud of the school. I'm extremely proud of the curricula that we offer and that we deliver. Uh, teaching and learning is at the forefront. And it's our belief that uh, students, as was shown in the mission statement, uh, should be knowledgeable, confident, ethical, and responsible citizens. Uh, but I'm equally proud of the way that ISR interacts with the community. Um, at ISR, we promote being the school with the Latvian heart. And the Latvian heart at, at ISR refers to uh, that unique relationship that the school plays within uh, the city, the region, and the country itself. Um, it's about not only knowing and understanding that we're an international school um, within the community, but we're a friend and a, we're, we're a willing partner. It's about our connections to nature, to the community and to the people therein, and how we interact with them on a daily basis. Um, it's visible in our community connections, and it's tangible when we seek partnerships uh, with those within our community. Uh, as I mentioned, we offer uh, I'm proud of the program we offer, and it's a rigorous academic program. Um, and uh, with respect to the academic program, you'll be hearing more about the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. You'll be hearing more about the International General Certificate of International Education Program, uh, you know, the IBDP and the IGCSE. You'll be hearing more about the International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program and you'll be hearing more about the International uh, Middle Years Program. Um, it's not just what we do though, it's how we do it. Uh, we really do, as Cyril said, we live our guiding statements each and every day. Um, and joining me today uh, in the, our presentation in the virtual open house will be sectional leads and administrators uh, from the school uh, that make it happen and they make it come to life each and every day. And in a few moments, I'm going to pass the mic, so to speak, to them to go into further sectional specific discussions. So enjoy the, uh, the next 50 minutes or so. Ask questions, take notes. Uh, we're here to guide. We're here to inform. Uh, so let's get started. Uh, I'm going to pass you now to International School of Riga's IBPYP coordinator, Ginta Karklina, and primary principal, Amanda Romi. Uh, Ginta and Amanda, take it away. Hey, good morning. As um, Shane said, I'm Amanda, and I'm the primary principal, and um, uh, this is my second year here, and I've really loved my experience here. And like Shane, uh, I have three kids here, so I can speak to you from that. Um, in the primary, we understand that we're the beginning of your child's formal education, and um, we don't take that job lightly. We know that it's a, a big decision for you. So we focus on taking care of your child's social emotional needs by creating a nurturing environment where we make learning an enjoyable experience for them and we really focus on meeting your child's needs. The reason that ISR chose to implement International Baccalaureate Primary Years Program, in short we call it just PYP, since it was founded as a school, uh, it, is that it puts a learner in the center IB calls it the learner profile, the character traits that we want to develop in ourselves and of course in our students, caring, thinkers, knowledgeable, inquirers, open-minded, courageous, balanced, reflective, principled and communicators. Another aspect of program is that it focuses on approaches to learning, in other words, life skills, thinking skills, communication skills, social skills, research skills and self-management skills. At the same time, the knowledge in traditional learning areas has not disappeared. 
Our school has open sequence documents for each subject area where we have outlined the knowledge, skills, and understandings for each grade level. The PYP program looks at students as learners who have agency. This means they have voice choice and ownership of their learning. Well, it does not mean students do only what they want, how they want, and if they are not up to, they do not learn at all. This means that we want students to become responsible for their own learning, to understand that they learn for themselves, not for others. During the last year of the PYP program in an hour school that is grade five, students demonstrate their ability to follow their interests, do independent research and present it to the uh, school, to their schoolmates, as well as to a wider community through their exhibition. Educating the whole child is really connected to everything we do here. This means that we intentionally look after each child's personal well being, their social emotional needs, and use his or her interests outside of school to build their knowledge in school. Because we have small classes with a teacher and a support teacher, our teaching teams have the time to connect and get to know your child and each child's needs. This, they use this information that they gather from each child to differentiate the learning experiences and support the students on their learning journey. This happens in collaboration with our learning support team. We, we have an SEN teacher and an English as an additional language teacher to help support or build any um, gaps that your child might have. Well, I believe you have heard that learning is a social process. Amanda already mentioned that our teachers get to know each one of their students to build relationships with each one of them. The distance learning situation has made some alterations, but when it was possible, and we hope it will be possible again, we created various opportunities for students to meet and make friendships with students in other grade levels. We greatly value relationships with our families as only working together, hand in hand, we can ensure the best support for each student. Along with building relationships, I would say a key difference in our approach to teaching is that we focus on big ideas and concepts that <laughs> allow students to construct meaning in their classes. We don't focus on memorizing details and, and simple facts, but really look at what it is we want students to really understand about their learning. We know that you can have knowledge about something without having understanding, but you can't have understanding without knowledge. When you walk into our classrooms, you will see students constructing meaning, collaborating with each other and connecting concepts with what they're learning. Our teachers understand <laughs> that learning can sometimes be messy and that's okay. And that kind of learning is called inquiry. Inquiry is a pedagogical approach with students being actively involved in their own learning and taking responsibility for that learning. Students through inquiry don't just acquire a wealth of knowledge, but also learn how to learn. So they will know what to do when they don't know what to do. Teachers plan engaging ways to spark students' interest so they would be interested to find out more. Inquiry leads to student engagement and student engagement happens when students value what they are learning and feel passionate and motivated to do the work of grappling with super complex concepts and topics to learn new information. We know that learning happens when our students are authentically engaged in their work. This is why our teachers are using what they know about learning and what they've learned about their students' backgrounds to make sure the content is relevant to them, but also super rigorous. And our knowledge about the student's needs and how the brain learns and processes information helps us create provocations to pique kids' interests, drive their learning, plan some forest trips and other, you know, other academic field trips along the way, plus have classrooms that are constructed with hands-on learning. Our students go to the forest several times a year Reading about the benefits of nature and being in fresh air is one thing, but to observe this in real life is something truly wonderful. A student who started learning English when, when only when joined our school and had been quiet for several months, all of a sudden started speaking English while in the forest as she wanted to share her observations. 
Students who have a harder time focusing in the classroom spend long periods of time constructing complicated structures. A group of five-year-olds, knowing that they can go only as far as they can see an adult asking a teacher to go with them further in the forest because they wanted to check if it's clean there or some rubbish would need to be collected. Our field trips also are linked to the program and they give real life connections. They are educational experiences. Guest speakers that visit our school are bringing additional learning experiences. For example, creating a huge mural on the wall with an art together with an artist, participating in science experiments, learning about zero waste or making ice cream. The nice thing about these trips is we learn that our learning environment is not just the classroom, but it's the entire world around us. And having these opportunities helps us build relationships, which are the key to creating learning environments where students feel safe and cared for and ready to learn. A positive classroom environment really helps improve students' attention, reduces their anxiety, and supports emotional and behavioral regulation. We intentionally foster a positive learning culture where our students are more likely to acquire higher motivation that leads to wonderful learning outcomes. And our teachers and our students work together to create the essential agreements within the classroom so that we know that it's safe, nurturing, and a place based with mutual respect and care. Just like a building starts with a strong foundation, school starts in preschool. Our youngest students are two years old. Uh, you may think at that is this age children only play. Yes, they play and this is the way they learn and acquire skills that will be necessary throughout their lives. Children develop their ability to choose, focus and follow through with the idea. In the preschool, in our preschool, we have mixed age groups and ISR decided on this approach after researching a wealth of materials in order to find out what is the most age appropriate model for young uh, children. Mixed age groups in early years classroom resemble family. They allow children to develop socially, emotionally, emotionally and academically in a harmonious way. Children become more independent. They learn to support each other rather than becoming fully dependent on their teacher as the only source of knowledge and help. This also means that each preschool class, depending on student's age, is a two or three year program with older children in the group moving up to the next grade, while the younger ones enjoy being part of the same group for another year. We understand that one important thing for parents is to know that your child is building the knowledge they need for the next grade. So we understand that assessment is important, but we also understand that authentic assessments are part of student learning, not just a way to sort of get the kids in the end. Our teachers use assessments to create opportunities for students to show they are learning in different ways and check that each child is learning what they need to know to move up to the next grade. In combination with authentic classroom-based assessments, we use the international measurement of academic progress to see where our students stand globally. This information ensures that our students are learning in a way that meets their personal unique needs, but also that they're prepared for our ever-changing world. Time is the key when implementing concept-based learning through inquiry. Therefore, the schedules are organized to give students larger blocks of time to engage in learning activities. For early year students, uh, morning hours are the most productive time, which they spend mostly in their classrooms. Outdoor recess is about one hour long, but the actual length of outdoor time depends on the weather. Um, our younger students have a have quiet time when they rest. The length of this time period depends on each student's needs. So therefore you see that it's extended quiet time or learning centers. Kindergarten students are part of the early year stage group as well, but they do not have quiet time anymore. For grade one through five students, uh, the day is organized in three blocks of time divided by snack and lunch breaks when students go outside for recess. As you can see, classroom time is organized in blocks as well. This gives each teacher a chance to plan the day according to the learning needs of students as well as curriculum requirements. 
during classroom time, which is blue here in this swift uh, sample schedule, schedule, students study English language arts, mathematics, science, social studies. And in addition to this, students go to other lessons, which we call specialist areas, physical education, visual, art, visual arts, music, Latvian or French languages. So after all of this awesome learning happens within the school day, we offer after school activities. In primary, we have over 50 options throughout the year for our students to build their learning outside of the traditional school day. This is a great way for students starting at the age of two to stretch themselves, maybe to learn something new or build on their favorite activities like football or Zumba, arts and crafts, jewelry making, scrapbooking, music, you can learn to play the guitar, some basketball, or maybe some floor hockey. Um, and now that Gint and I had the opportunity to really tell you about the structure of primary, I would like to introduce two of our awesome parents, Claudia and Rex. Um, they're members of the PTO, and they will discuss what it's like being a parent at ISR and sort of give you some ideas about what the transition to Latvia as an expat might be like. Hello, my Hi. name is Rex Miller. I didn't mean to talk over you, Claudia. I'm sorry about that. No, that's fine. That's fine. Why don't you start? And then um, I'll just go after you. OK. Um, well, we arrived in August in the Beale for Riga. And uh, I think we we're really fortunate to have found ISR. I have a first grader and a second grader, and uh, you know they love the teachers, they love the classmates, and as we've transitioned into distance learning, I have to say hats off to ISR for making what in the States has been a very difficult process here in Latvia, a very rewarding process for my kids. Um, and the fact that we're able to do some one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with the staff has just been fantastic. As far as Riga itself as an expat, I have to say it's just a lovely, lovely town. Um, it's pretty. The people are really nice. Uh, it's not too big. It's not Washington, D.C. or Paris, which are, you know, both very nice, but both very, very big. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, it's cosmopolitan as well. There's a nice selection of things to do and to see good outdoor activities and good, good cultural opportunities and uh, just some amazing architecture when you look at the Art Nouveau building that occurred in the uh, early uh, 20th century. Um, as far as the sense of community goes, again, hats off to ISR. I found a wonderful sense of community, both of the parent-teacher organization and within the school itself. The, uh, the parents and the uh, staff are just fantastic. And so we really feel lucky to be here. Claudia, over to you. Hi, yeah, welcome everybody to the virtual show around. Um, my name is Claudia, I'm German, and I have an Irish husband. That's why for us, we've chosen international school. It was important to find a good one, of course. Um, we viewed two different international schools. ISR was our second one, and I was hoping my daughter would also say she wants to go there, which she did. She picked the school. Based on what I also observed, I got the best show around. It was such a warm welcome. Um, staff, um, teachers, pupils greeted you in the corridors. So I, I immediately felt home and I thought, wow, this is brilliant. So uh, it was an easy decision for us. And when we moved here then in 2019 in the summer, I met one parent and she introduced me like in the in a time span of two days to about a hundred different parents from all different nationalities, which was absolutely brilliant because that's not just your child is happy. You as a parent have a place as well. And you have been informed about where's the best doctor to use? What restaurant is good? Where can you go on holidays here? What short trips are to be made? So um, we felt very, very welcome and busy all of a sudden. So um, yeah, that was great. And Latvia itself, I can't, speak highly of, of any country than Latvia. I have to say that the people are very relaxed and friendly. It's uncomplicated to live here because nearly almost everybody speaks English. So um, that's another way of makes your life easier and to start to settle in. 
the beautiful landscape of Latvia is absolutely amazing. Like Rex pointed out, we have a fantastic, beautiful old city. Um, everything is small and compact, so you find your way very quick. And um, there's beautiful beaches, very kids friendly. And yeah, we're very, very happy. And also I am um, like Rex, a member of the parent teacher organization where we also try to engage parents and um, yeah, do something nice for our school community, like giving out ice cream to all the grades or um, organizing a charity event, different, different things where we hope we get new impulses once you join. And yeah, for your further decision, what you have to make for moving and um, also for your kids school, I have to say all the best of luck to you. And maybe we see each, see each other in the coming school year. Wow, thank you so much, um, Rex and Claudia. I just want to, I just want to say that we did not ask them to say those things. Uh, it's really coming from the heart and that's wonderful. Thank you so much. So um, as they mentioned, uh, Rex and Claudia are uh, very active members of the PTO, the Parent Teacher Association, uh, organization, sorry. And um, they really try to uh, build and uh, keep building that sense of community. They do a lot of um, events and keep the community engagement going, and that's absolutely wonderful. Um, also, as they mentioned, the transition into uh, Latvia in the school, um, at ISR we have a Karen Ambassador Program, uh, which means that um, when a new family joins, we try to match this family with a current family at ISR that could help them with the transition. As I mentioned at the beginning, we have 47 uh, nationalities uh, at ISR. So we are, you are bound to find somebody who's um, culturally uh, closer to you, or um, if you're coming in with young children, parents who have young children, or parents uh, from high school. So we, we will really do our best to uh, match families, uh, so that also, also helps uh, make the transition easier. Um, so that was a wonderful presentation for uh, primary. Uh, now it's time to move uh, to move on to the secondary, and it's my great pleasure to introduce um, our secondary principal and secondary assistant principal, Miss uh, Sally Monteith and Mr. Craig Patterson. Hi, good morning. Um, make sure I'm unmuted. Yes, thank you for joining us today from we're coming from around the world. That's great to see. I'm gonna give you an overview of the secondary, what we do and the building that we work on from the primary school before we look at moving into the specifics of the secondary curriculum. So in the secondary, like primary, we work at on focusing on the whole child, we have a personalized approach that we use to best support the students through their time at ISR. So we provide the opportunities to explore their passions and interests during the school, as well as working with them to develop and support them beyond just the academics that we also have. And so some of the ways that we do this is we have our college counselor who starts working with our students in grade eight to choose their courses for the IGCSE for grade nine and works with them right up until they apply to universities um, in grade 11 and 12. And we also have a very active pastoral care system where, um, sorry, excuse me. Sorry, so I just got distracted. I apologize. Someone's just come in the room. Um, so we have active pastoral care system that helps students and supports them who may be struggling academically, for example, or if they need to get some support for time management, and we provide them with strategies to help them be successful. And every grade has one or two advisors who works and checks in with the students every single day for a very brief period of time and then they work with the group of students their advisees for a longer period of time a full period actually once a week and like in the primary 
We also have an um, English as an additional language program for the students who needs to have some more support for their English language, as well as a learning support coordinator who works with students and with teachers to best support our students. Um, and then one thing we're very proud of, and I was very pleased to see the video at the beginning because that came out of this, it's our mission and service program, which is student initiated and student led and it focuses on students passions. And all of the groups tie themselves back to the ISR mission statement, as well as giving back to our community in some capacity. Um, and so in order to support the buy-in and get our students involved in this program, we provide them with time through the school day, once a week for running out of the program, getting them for the development of the skills, which also Ginta was referring to, but it transfers to not just their academic studies, but as well as to their life outside of the school. And it is also really good preparation for our students going from middle school into grades nine and 10 high school and the CAS uh, program in IBTDP, which is Creativity, Activity, and Service. And so a list of some of the mission and service activities that we are offering this year are here for you to see. But the video that you saw at the beginning was actually done by a filming club mission and service group back two years ago. So you've seen a hands-on example of what our students are capable of doing. So like in primary, we have a very active arts, sports, academics, and activities program that runs after school. Most of the time there are some that run through the school day um, depending on schedules. And so they're running trimesters and they actually coincide with sports sports seasons, which allow our students to compete with other schools in Riga. And we've actually even done sports um, uh, exchanges and tournaments down in Vilnius in Lithuania. And obviously that's not happening right now, but once COVID is over, we will go back to doing that when it's face to face. So here's just some examples. And you can see from the picture that was from Annie that was done um, two years ago. So in the secondary, we actually have three different curricula. In the middle school, we have the International Middle Years Curriculum, IMYC. In high school, we've got the IGCSE for grades nine and 10, and then the International Baccalaureate Program in grades 11 and 12. So at this time, it is my pleasure to hand it over to the secondary assistant principal, Craig Patterson, who is also our IMYC coordinator. Great. Uh, good morning all. It's lovely to see you. Thank you, Sally. Um, I'm just going to take a few minutes to take you through the IMYC program, why we use that within our middle school um, only. It's a program that is built for grades six, seven and eight. So this is students who are just um, hitting adolescence. Um, this is a very important program, as you can see by point number five, that helps our students to bridge the gap between the PYP program and then as they move into the IGCSE program in grade nine. Uh, there are five uh, points that are the under, underlying principles of the IMYC program um, based on the thinking of the students. That is, they need to make meaning of their learning um, students at this age, they need to make those connections. Uh, as we all know, students, um, as they're hissing their teenage years, they need active involvement within their lives. Um, they need their peers for so many things. And as I've said, they need a bridge from primary to secondary. And this program does this very well. Uh, the program itself is based around um, a series of units, which I'll uh, show you some examples in a moment, but very much like the PYP, the IMYC learning is based around a central idea or a big idea. The difference, though, as they move into the middle school program is they will start attending individual classes, so they will go to science, they'll have social studies, which is history and geography, They'll have music classes, uh, art, technology, English, mathematics, and so forth. 
that within all of these programs, we're all looking at the same units of work, which are centered around uh, the big idea. And then we follow a circular process, as you can see in front of us, starting with an entry point right through to the learning activities, reflection, um, assessment for learning, and we end with the exit point as well. Some of the units um, that, that are covered um, are here, you can see they're all based on the concept. That concept then stems to the big idea. So the, in the top row, you can see in front of you the units that are covered in grade six. That middle row are the units that are covered in grade seven and the bottom row are the units that are covered in grade eight. Um, all of the single subjects, science, social studies, maths, et cetera, will all be looking and be basing themselves on that particular concept and the big idea, but then the learning outcomes um, will be based around the curriculum of science and social studies and so forth. Um, as, or, as always, it's already um, been mentioned to you apart, uh, in the PYP and in the primary program, assessment and evaluation um, is important. We know that already. Um, but for the IMYC, it's structured around three specific types. Their knowledge, um, which everyone can understand. There is a whole lot of different ways that we assess their knowledge. It might be tests, it might be exams, but also it might be project-based learning and doing research. But we're also looking at the skills. The IMYC program itself has a really good support mechanism in their assessment for learning program to help us assess the skills. And then the students' understanding is through their reflections as well as the exit points, which are the big projects we do at the end of um, each unit. But what's different? about an IMYC school. Why, do we, why have we chosen to have the, inter, um, the International Middle Years program just for grades six, seven and eight at our school? And that is because it specifically meets the needs of those students 11 to 14. And that's that middle school age in the middle. Uh, the high school grade nine and 10, 11 and 12 are a little bit more focused coming up from the primary school. Um, they're all working within the one classroom. Here, they're starting to branch out. But with the program still focuses on the student as a whole. But as I said to you, the big idea links the different curriculum subject areas together. It does prepare the students for high school um, because it promotes critical thinking, collaboration and communication skills but they still get the opportunity to develop and present their own, their own ideas with an exit point program. And just as a side, um, within our distance learning program, we've developed a program over the last two years. This year, we're calling it the uh, Middle School Spring Project, where for two weeks, we just started it this week, the students are um, all on independent learning, working with supervisor teachers, where they're working on researching, developing their ideas in something that they are passionate about. So we've got students who are learning how to cook. We've got students who have never cooked before, but they're taking the time now to learn how to cook. When do you get time to teach your kids how to cook? We've got kids learning how to play instruments, developing their artistic skills. We've got students sewing, teaching themselves how to sew, make their own clothes, sport and recreation, developing fitness activities. Um, and one of the reasons we do this and what we're quite proud of here at school is that we know that the distance learning can be hard, sitting on the, or sitting on the computer the whole time, every day, interacting with your teachers is difficult, not having that social interaction. So we're putting these programs in place, particularly during the distance learning program, to get the kids to broaden what they're doing, get themselves off the computer and get them to do something that they are passionate about. Um, with that, I'll hang back to Sally, who will continue on talking about the IGCSE. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Craig. Um, I'll uh, set just a brief aside to go with his. I'm a supervisor for one of the cooking groups and already after two days, they've done some great recipes and have good plans for themselves. So it's nice to see them engaged in a passion that um, is going to be useful for them. Uh, just wish we were in, in person so we actually might get to taste some of their creations. So on with the IGCSE. So it stands for the International General Certificate of secondary education and it's awarded by the Cambridge International Examinations and the culminating assessments for the IGCSE are exams at the end of a two-year program but again as it's brought up in primary and as what Craig said assessment um, is important all the way through. So it's not like we just ignore assessments and evaluations through this time, um, but we do ongoing assessments and scaffold and build the skills and the knowledge and the content so the students can be successful at the end of it. Our Cambridge coordinator, who is also our college counselor, supports the students with their subject choices from grade eight and then through into their next group of subject choices, helping to ensure that they're on the path that they need to be on to be successful in not just diploma but moving on to university and what their longer term plans are. And for our Latvian students, um, we instead of taking the IGCSE language uh, course that we they can opt into taking Latvian classes which prepare them for the national Latvian national exams both at the end of grade nine and then continuing their studies so they can do it at the end of grade 12. So the IGCSE is a rigorous program and the students are required to take seven core classes and these are the seven classes that we are requiring the students to take here at ISR. So they also are allowed to take three elective courses. So they do get to choose a language, whether it's French, Spanish, Latvian, or some of our students have taken a self-study um, mother tongue uh, course if it's for when they go back to their home country and need to have done the study in their best language. They need to take a social studies, and those are the two that we offer, and then an arts or technology, whether it's art and design, computer science, or music. So they're getting a very broad range of courses and developing themselves in a variety of different subject areas. So now we're moving on to the um, Actually, I want to just add about the IGCSE is that the rigor of the academics do in, um, in fact prepare them for the IBDP. And then as I wrote in the previous slide, the Global Perspectives course is a new addition and it's really supportive of the part of the core program that we offer in the diploma. So moving forward to grades 11 and 12 in the International Baccalaureate Diploma Program. And it's, again, another two-year rigorous program with culminating exams at the end or large assessments, depending on their subject choices. And again, like has happened in primary IMYC and in IGCSE, we do prepare them with different assessments and evaluations along the way. So they are ready in order to do their external exams or external assessments at the end of the 18 months. Um, and it is... a very good preparation for universities and it is considered to be a very prestigious degree for them to have. They have to take six subjects and successfully pass the core in order to be awarded the IB diploma. And so if you're looking at the program model there on the right, like the primary year's program model, we've got the student in the center and that's the three heads that you see and that runs through all of the IB programs. And so as Ginton mentioned, the way the IB uh, puts the students at the center is having the learner profile and those are the 10 attributes there that the IB feels we need to develop in the learners as well as teachers and we develop these in all of our learners not just the IBDP program and the IBPYP program and one of the ways in secondary that we do this is having um, a learner profile of the month and we actually do this across the whole school including early years and primary so we do focus on these as well to develop in our students. 
So here we are looking back at the program model and you can see the second circle um, is um, the approaches to teaching and approaches to learning. And so these are the skills that again, um, Ginter referred to back with the primary years program, communication, collaboration, self-management, research, and thinking. So just we follow that through the entire um, schooling that they have here at ISR. Um, and it is, they are lifelong skills. They transfer to outside of not just education, but to what they will do in university as well as lifelong skills in the workplace. So the core is a requirement to successful completion of the diploma. And there are three components to the core. So we have the creativity, activity, and service, which adds value to the student's education through student-driven projects. They participate in internships, it could be sports, types of career advancements, skills development, and community service projects. They also have to um, complete a theory of knowledge course, which runs over the 16 months. And it's a critical thinking course where they have to engage in different ways of knowing. And extended essay is a 4,000 word independent research paper that they need to do that is based in a subject and area of a passion that they have. They're spending a lot of time with this essay, so they really need to be involved and engaged and really like what they're studying. So finally, we get to if back to that circle model, we get to the actual um, content of academics that the students are engaged in. So it's made up of six courses that they need to take. And these are the course selections that we offer here at ISR. Some students will choose to take two group one um, subjects. And if they do that, they end up with um, a bilingual diploma, which is quite uh, distinguished for them. They're working in two languages uh, considered proficient mother tongue level. So that is a very good accomplishment for any student who undertakes that. Um, and also for some students, depending on where they're going for their university, the group six can be replaced with a second group three of social studies or a second group four, which is a science based course. And the final part of the IBDP is that outer ring of the program model, which says international mindedness. And this permeates all areas of our programs, allowing the students to gain respect and perspective for people. And this ties back to our ISR mission statement way back at the beginning, if you remember, where it talks about being an internationally minded citizen of tomorrow. So this international mindedness is how we work and develop our students to be that global citizen and internationally minded citizen. So now I, it brings me great pleasure to introduce to you our student council vice president, Ms. Yulia Namova. Hello everyone, my name is Yulia and I'm in grade 11 right now. So I've been in the school for six years now and I also have two siblings who have attended this school. So my brother, he just graduated last year. He got into an Ivy League university and my sister is in grade nine right now. So my grade, grade 11, is actually the first grade in our school to take the IB diploma program. And I personally think that the IB diploma program is very beneficial for us because even though it requires a lot of work because we're taking more subjects than the A-level, I think that it prepares us for the universities much better. Because for example, the CASPORT program, um, it requires us and it motivates us to have external projects outside of school, such as for example, uh, courses, uh, reading a book, or maybe some like attending some events. Um, another component of IB is the TLK. And I think that it is very important because it teaches us to evaluate different aspects of knowledge from different perspectives um, by understanding how the knowledge was built up initially, and how it evaluated it over the years. And another component, which is the extended essay, as Ms. Sally already talked about it. I think that not only does it teach us to uh, understand how to build a proper research paper, but it also teaches us how to structure and how to phrase an essay, which is very important because just in a year, we are going to be applying to the universities and we're going to be writing our personal essays, which is very <laughs> important. So personally, I am a very ambitious person and I will be applying to American universities just like my brother. And as you probably know, American universities require you to take a lot of extracurricular activities and to participate in as many as possible activities in school. 
And I think that I'm very lucky that our school actually provides these because, for instance, I participate in the student council, as you have seen, I'm the vice president. I also take the MUN as an after school activity. We have a lot of different internships, webinars, um, online um, workshops, different business meetings. And uh, recently I have attended the CEO talk. It's an online workshop. Uh, also, I've attended the business breakfast discussion held by the British Chamber of Commerce, uh, which was a discussion on the impact of coronavirus on the free ports of Riga, basically. Um, yeah, I also got an internship recently in one venture capital fund. Another event, another opportunity that we have at our school is actually the meeting with the alumni, which is happening about like Thursday next week. And I think that it is very important to have meetings like these because like our life is going to change just in a year after we graduate school. And so it's very important to learn how it's going to change and how to prepare ourselves for that, you know? Um, yeah, and it's also going to be interesting because my brother is attending it and I think, yeah. And finally, my favorite activity at our school is the mission service. Uh, I, at, like, I participate in the SMILE mission and service group. It's a charity group that was founded about three or four years ago, and I was a member since the very beginning. Uh, now I'm with the leader of the group, and basically what the group aims to do is we raise donations and raise awareness for the kids with disabilities at the Rika's Orphanage. Uh, at the moment, we have divided our huge group into four smaller groups. We have two groups that are aimed at raising donations and two that are aimed at raising the awareness. So one of the groups is the custom masks. Um, this here is actually our product. It's a mask, it's a custom mask. We have already sold about 25 of those with a profit of over $100. Uh, of course, every, everything goes for charity, for donation. Yep, um, another group is the master classes group. It's basically a group that also aims to raise donations for the orphanage and basically they focus on the virtual events such as master classes, online cooking master classes and those kinds of events. Then the third group is the awareness group. Uh, they are quite self-explanatory. They just create posters to raise awareness about the children in the orphanages, especially with disabilities. And the final group is the website group. We have created our website about um, half a year ago. And now this group aims to maintain this website by writing articles, um, creating new posts there, and maintaining it basically. So yeah, I think this kind of wraps it up. But to conclude, I would like to say that I don't think that every school allows uh, students to participate in as many extracurriculars and in as many activities and opportunities. And I think that is very important for students who want to apply into the best universities like me. Um, yeah, so thank you for having me. I think it's a great opportunity to be in the school. Thank you so much, Julia. Um, that was wonderful. Yes, uh, as Julia mentioned, uh, um, when you join ISR, you become a member of the community, but you're also a member of the community for life. Um, after you graduate, you enter the uh, Alumni Association. And we have a, a comprehensive alumni program. And as Julia mentioned, yes, we are having a mentoring session between our graduates and our current uh, high schoolers, uh, where they're going to talk about the good, the bad, the ugly of what it's like to uh, um, enter life. Some of them to gap year, some of them went to university, and they're going to talk about you know everything that school prepares you or does not pre prepare you for. So it should be a very interesting. Um, as you can see, we have um, very active students. The, the community is not just um, the, the staff and the faculty to the students, it's the parents like we um, also mentioned before, but also the students. Um, our students are incredibly ambitious and most of them have a very, very good sense of business um, as Julia was selling uh, the masks. <laughs> <laughs> for the small group um, and it's just wonderful to see students taking um like really control of their of their own learning um and i think that's what that's something i saw this very well is that it empowers students to become the main actors of their own learning and not learn in a passive way um so that's something that as a parent myself i i really really like 
Um, I'm mindful of the time and I see that we already almost at the hour. So I will just um, reshare my screen very quickly, just to go through the enrollment process just in two minutes. You can find all the information you might possibly need on the website. If you look at the admission section, you've got obviously the tuition and fees, which might be important to some parents. Um, you also have um, how to apply the whole process and um, also the um, possibility to apply online. So very quickly, this is the, um, the process you go through. You submit an application online, then uh, we reach out to you and we ask for supporting documents, namely references from uh, teachers, also report cards for um, the most recent two years. And then from grade three onwards, we ask students to take an initial assessment. It's not meant to be, um, you know, make it or break it. It's more to help us assess where the student is standing at the time of entry, just so we can help the students in the best way possible. And after that, we contact you with uh, very hopefully a welcome to ISR decision. And um, yeah, that's how it goes. And then uh, you're part of the ISA community. And like I said, you're part of the community for a very, very long time. Um, if you would like to know more, those are the contact details. I'm always happy to have a chat. I can uh, call, email, whatever is most convenient for you. And also, if you don't already, I would really, really uh, encourage you to follow us on uh, social media because that's where you see everything that's happening inside the school, all the student initiatives, um, all the wonderful things that are happening on a daily basis at ISR. It's never, uh, never a boring day uh, at ISR, that is for sure.